Hello, it's almost one o'clock and I have an appointment with the Archive Research Center at the Woodruff Library at the AU Center. It's the like the center. It's like the library for Morehouse, Spelman, Clark Atlanta, but basically a collection of historically black colleges and universities in Atlanta. They have like the center and they have a lot of there's archives here that I'm going to be looking at. This is a musicologist, her papers, but she has music from like she's an African-American musicologist. So she's a black woman, um, but she also has papers from around the world. Um, and I'll just say like music notes from around the world. So there's a lot of even when I was reading the Finding Aid, it was a lot, talking a lot about the historical significance of the collection in regards to if you have interest in like early black music history like there's a lot of stuff and there's even people i looked up but maude cuny hair i will leave a disc leave the finding aid in the description so you can see everything you you know everything to know about the collection so that's what i'm doing today i'm really tired but and i scheduled this appointment and this happens every time same with class earlier this week i was really exhausted but once i go i know i'm ha gonna have a great time and just learn so much and benefit from it but i will say there are downsides to the archives which i'm gonna talk about in my final paper and in terms of like just going to the archives because anybody can go but also it's kind of like the feeling if you've ever been on a golf course but you don't feel like you're quiet enough as a person like it's kind of that feeling there's a lot of things that go in like i think that are involved um, and I'm also just like thinking through. So if you have interest in any of this, I can make a separate video or talk about this like in a different place. But it's just like, I'm tired enough to not be in the mood for any of this right now. <laughs> but again, I know I'm gonna have a great time. There's no photographic restrictions on the collection I'm looking at, but they do have like Martin Luther King Jr.'s, like all his papers, like his collection of like everything that Coretta Scott King maybe, I think. I don't know how he got here, I can't remember, but I know like that's a whole thing. But yeah, so there's a lot of, other things going on but it all leads to like discomfort for like an average person that's all i'm gonna go try to pay the park and find my way in there because this is my first time being here i haven't been on this campus since i think i went to like spell me more house i don't know if it was spell house homecoming in like 2019 so yeah it's been a while so i'm gonna go
I am back from the archives. I was there for an hour and a half looking at the Maud Cooney hair collection. There was a lot of like programs, music notes, interesting. I think my favorite thing was the music notes and seeing that. Um, I actually forgot how to read music. Like I learned how to read music in like school and like elementary school but I could I was like oh shoot I forgot like I haven't even seen music notes in this way I actually draw music notes a lot like when I'm doodling and stuff like that but I haven't actually seen music notes like just like the music in a while um but that was really just fascinating and I realized as I was looking I like the content better than what I saw last week. It felt a little bit more aligned like I love so both of them are like had overlapping of like music but this was more the composers which the Delilah Jackson collection had a little bit of but this was focused on like these were the actual programs and what they did and the songs that they like performed at the different recitals but also the actual music that they created in the notes and the dates that and they brought dates for everything and like 1899 and 1888, 1886, this letter from the person's collection, Maud Cooney Care, Maud Cooney Hair. And she was just advocating for like these musicians, like different stuff she's collected. Like people, sh basically saying like people should know about them and they sh this work is credited to this person, but it should be credited for them. And she was just talking about, she's like these colored musicians should be recognized and, um, I just feel like overall, this was more aligned to my interests in general. And I'm still trying to figure out my interests for moving forward because overall I do like cultural history, cultural black history. It is not really limited to the borders of the United States, of course, but I'm kind of narrowing things down. And I do know I really care and prioritize black women as well. Really exciting. And also, you know, the 19th century, aspect i don't know i still have a lot of thoughts because i'm still processing my little bit of thoughts so i'm actually gonna go run an errand and then come back and tell you the rest of what i think about what i saw today but i will say number one takeaway right now is i definitely want to get back into reading or being able to read music again um and i'm thinking i'm like when i get a little bit more like when i'm having income again considering doing piano classes but BRB. One of the cool things about archives is they want you, for the most part, they want you to come in. They want more people to use them because if people are not using them, like the whole point is to preserve them and make them available to the public. And if people are not using them, it kind of like defeats the purpose almost. And I really just think that going to the archives and seeing these papers and seeing how things done and just kind of like just looking at something different than what I've seen just in general. I've never seen a letter from 1886. Just seeing something different kind of just like kind of sparked so many ideas. I don't know if this inspires you and encourages you to check out archives near you. Um, like I don't, I try not to romanticize it, but I do think there's a lot of value in the archives and that's why one of the things i want to do is teach people about the value of like preserving their personal documents um in the future a lot of things i need to do ahead of that to get to that point but and there's so many things i want to do there's so many things i want to do but one of those is to teach people like encourage people to preserve their own archives i don't know who knows what i'll end up doing at the end of this program and that's exciting this trip today was definitely another like step toward learning more about what i want to do and they all kind of go back to the same kind of core theme core themes <laughs> but i'm really just yeah just really excited about today's archive trip yeah all of these are my notes from today so you know I really did get some ideas sparked today and just gonna let them simmer so thank you so much for watching today's archive video this was definitely a little bit more of a chaotic one because I didn't expect to film a video I originally planned to film a video I thought I couldn't film at all then I was able to film once I asked so overall a little bit more chaotic and less organized than la the last archives video but definitely let me know if 
if you want to see more of these because I do think there's value um in me going but just anybody going that wants to and hopefully these videos have encouraged you to do something that you weren't sure you're able to do but you definitely are so that is all for today and I'll see you in my next video